Welcome to WDNG Ed Talks, a simple discussion about sometimes complex military education benefits. I'm Sergeant First Class Jason Wilson. This is a special edition of Ed Talks, and we will be turning the tables on our usual formatting. Today, I will be interviewing our Ed Talks host, Dr. Sherry Schaefer, who is the Education Services Officer for the West Virginia National Guard. Together, we will discuss the changes to the Federal Tuition Assistance and Credentialing Assistance Programs and since Dr. Schaefer serves as the primary counselor for these programs, I'll be sitting in the host seat. Dr. Schaefer, welcome to Ed Talks. Thank you for having me. This is your first time on the other side of the Ed Talks table. It is, and it's a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely tell. Yeah. Lots of things have changed in terms of the Federal Education Benefits Program. What can you tell us about that? Well, there have been a lot of changes, and the first thing that is most recognizable is the fact that we have a new portal. We're now operating with the www.armyignited.army.mil. Some of us lovingly call it Army Ignited 2.0, but it is the, the new site. It launched around the end of August, 1st of September, and we're con- continuing to see some new functionality all the time as more process operations become available. However, I will say that the things that haven't changed are that it's still 16 semester hours or $4,000 total per federal fiscal year for federal tuition assistance and or credentialing assistance combined. And you still have to have that 2.0 GPA for the undergrad and 3.0 for your graduate work. So what are your thoughts on the new platform? What do you think of it? Well, I absolutely love it. I really do. I I think that the dashboard alone itself, just the view of the system is so much more manageable, like mentally. And and, and this kind of goes back to back in the day when I was uh, chairing a department, I was reviewing textbooks for students and I complained to a textbook rep, there's too many things on this page, I don't know what to look at. And he told me, he said, oh, that's because younger students like all of that, pictures and widgets and all these things to look at. Me, not so much, so maybe that's a a sign of my age that I like this portal a lot better. It just seems a lot more um, laid out more efficiently, and it's more user-friendly. I think it's more intuitive, so I I just feel like, for me, I like it a lot better. (laughs) So you like the feng shui, so to say, of the actual site? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, What are you hearing from the soldiers and the academic institutions in response to the mitigation? Well, the new um, system, I think, for the most part, our soldiers have given positive responses. You know, it's, it is a bit tedious because many of them who've used the old system now have to reinvent the wheel a little bit by way of building new profiles, getting their education goals back in, degree plans and all of that. But they are working the process. I mean, they're doing what they need to do, and they're staying in touch with our office if they confront any issues, and that, that's a good thing. But for the most part, the feedback has been positive. Um, I think, too, the, the, the education institutions are enjoying it, too. One of the issues we are seeing has to do with civilian education levels, and I think the system seems to be defaulting back to less than high school for, for some of our soldiers. Our best advice for this situation, and I say this because I'm getting calls about it all the time, is that the soldier needs to check with their unit and make sure that their civilian education level is correct in IPERMS and IPSE. And we think that that will fix the problem if it keeps reoccurring in the new Army Ignited portal. Otherwise, the the fact that your civ ed level is changing or reverting back to less than what you have, <clears throat> in many cases it's blocking our soldiers from attempting to work their tuition assistance requests. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you know we can edit when necessary, but... Again, the reset will happen if the soldier doesn't get it looked at and corrected at the unit level. Now, the school representatives that I've spoken to, they're very excited about the new platform. Uh, Many of them had worked in it previously because this was an Air Force product. Much like myself, they've been anxious to get in the system, get familiar with it, and get the training going for those that hadn't used it in the past and maybe see what the changes are in terms of now it's an Army product. Um, we all want it to succeed. You know, that's the end goal there. We want it to succeed, and and we know we can better serve our soldiers with this product. Awesome. Um, So let's take a deeper dive into the Federal Tuition Assistance Program. What are the significant changes affecting our soldiers? 
All right, so I'm going to list these off, and, and hopefully I'm not missing anything. But first and foremost, we have the new Army Ignited system, lovingly known as 2.0. Uh, they don't brand it that way, but, you know, it's, <laughs> yes, that's kind of what we what call we're calling it. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second thing is that there are lots of tutorials built into the system to assist soldiers when they're trying to navigate it, to learn it. You know, what am I missing? What do I need to do? So they can find those tutorials pretty, pretty easily to assist them. And that's kind of the first go-to. This is where I can go and I can take a look and find the answers that I need. The second thing, and this one is, or third thing, really, this is really critical the deadline to submit your tuition assistance requests has changed. It is now 60 to 7 days from the start of the term. And that is important. They have to know 60 to 7 days. If you get to 6 days prior to the start of the term, there is no ETP for that. You're not going to get an exception to policy. You are not going to get funding. So you have to make sure that for every single semester, you are tracking that change and that you are getting those applications in prior to, you know, that seven-day window from the start date of your course. I recommend you don't wait until day seven because stuff happens. Like I said, you know, sometimes the CIV ed level will get you. Sometimes you're, you didn't put in your um, personal email address or whatever, and the system's going to put a stopper on you, basically. So you need to allow some time. I'm telling people don't go any pa- anytime past day 10 from the start. It's a, it's a good point. I mean, because life does happen. Things do catch up to us, and, you know, that closer to that deadline you get, the, the less time you have to actually get into your class. So. That's true. And, you know, we're not always here on a weekend. So if that yeah. window closes over the weekend, you're, you're just basically out of luck. Correct. So another thing is, is that uh, the course end dates have to be more than 14 days prior to your, to your ETS or retirement. So that's something that they need to keep in mind. System messages will now occur or should occur when your tuition assistance requests are approved or if more information is needed. So that's a good thing that's coming about. Soldiers can take up to two courses before they have to upload a degree plan from their academic academic institution. So they need to keep that in mind. Um, you know, they may think, well, I just took a couple classes and didn't say I needed that. Well, that's because it's going to give you a little bit of time to get in the system, but now you've hit that you know, that stopper there, and it's telling you, hey, you've got to have this in here because we need to make sure you're following the correct path. Someone at some level was actually pretty smart in doing that to, to you know, in case a soldier doesn't like what major he's taken because he's, a, you know, a brand new student or whatever. So, you know, building that in to where, you know, it allows them to at least give at least a couple classes in before they actually, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do in life. Yeah, it's right. a good idea. So for soldiers that need to drop or withdraw a course, a course, they have to initiate this with their academic institution. And grades have to be posted by the academic institution within 60 days of the course end date or prior to your ETS or retirement. So if no grade is posted or a soldier receives an unsatisfactory grade, there will be a recoupment. Now, NSAT grades, that means a D or below for an undergraduate work or a C or below for graduate work. And if you get that, you're going to be recouped. So you need to make sure that you're going to class, you're passing your, your exams, you're studying, doing your homework, you know, all those things that we, we tell people about um, so that you don't get that recoupment. Yeah, definitely making sure that their workload versus, uh, you know, work versus actual coursework, you know, those can be um, mitigate the situation itself. If you're taking too many classes and trying to work full time and I've experienced that in my own past. So, yeah, it, it can really come back to haunt you if you don't watch what you're doing. And it can haunt you now financially, yeah, <laughs> not exactly. just your GPA. So, all right, so moving on, if soldiers, um, they will not be refunded for grades that were, have been changed after a recruitment is processed. So, you know, if this could be an incomplete or something. So if, if you need to do an incomplete process, you need to be contacting your education services office so that you know how to work the process and what the limitations are there in terms of dates and whatnot. Um, soldiers must also initiate a recruitment waiver within 30 days from the date of a course withdrawal. So failing or unsatisfactory grades no longer qualify for this waiver, and that's kind of a new thing too. So they need to be tracking these changes in order to work effectively in this system and not be recouped. That's good. Uh, no one wants a recoupment on their uh, on nope. their tail end, that's no. for sure. <laughs> no, they don't. 
So what can you tell us about the uh, outstanding tuition assistance requests that were still pending in the old Army Ignited system? So we know we have some soldiers that have this issue because I'm getting calls about them in my office. Um, What we are seeing is some of those old tuition assistance requests are migrating now to the new Army Ignited 2.0 system. I have seen cases where a soldier had three outstanding courses and only one has migrated for payment. That means the other two have not come in for payment. Um, We just have to basically wait and let the system work the process. We have to wait and see when the migrations that they're doing will pick up those remaining courses, or you know, if it's if it's not happening in a timely manner, you know, we can we can reach out to our federal SESs um, to assist. Those are the folks that help at the federal level with tuition assistance. Um, you know, but this is new territory, and and we're going to feel these growing pains for a little bit. But by and large, the soldiers are working the process. As I said earlier, hopefully, our academic institutions will continue to remain patient, continue to work with the soldiers and our office because, you know, we have to wait for this process to work. Like I said, this new system came about toward the end of August, early September, and so they had to move outstanding TA requests from one system to the other, and it does take time. I mean, it just can't do it all at once, or it would probably just, you know, <laughs> crash. But Nothing works that fast. No. So they we, we, we kind of, I, I cannot stress enough, just please try to be patient. Please try to remain in communication with your school. And with our office, and, you know, we'll try to help you as best we can. Where can soldiers go for help if they have an unresolved request or payment issue? Well, from what we understand with this new system, it is imperative to use the messaging system within Army Ignited. This triggers inquiries to be sent to the SESS, which is our federal-level counselors who can review their case and their questions. Um You know, like I said, the migration of the old tuition assistance requests have continued, and we are seeing many of those show up in the student records in Army Ignited 2.0 now. So not only is it important to put those messages in there, but it's also important to watch your own uh, dashboard and your own tuition assistance request to see what's populating because the soldier should be tracking what's been paid and what hasn't. You know, if they're hearing from the cashier's office, hey, you owe for, you know, math one 100 and you haven't paid, you need to be watching for that to drop in there and then communicating that within the messaging system. We, we know it's challenging. Again, I cannot stress enough, be patient. We, we have to work with the counselors and the school representatives to work these issues Um, especially those cases that need any kind of manual processing. And that may come in the future if if the the migrations are complete and some of those courses didn't get picked up for whatever reason. um, At some point, we believe our federal level counselors will be able to do that. Um, And again, this is few and far between for our West Virginia soldiers, but there may be a few that are impacted. And so we just need to kind of watch it and track it. There is also a help ticket option, and this can be submitted by clicking the question mark. I got a question about this this morning. (laughs) I don't see where to put that in. Well, there's a big question mark, and it's right there. It should be, I think, on the right-hand corner of their screen. What the soldiers see is a little bit different what I see, Um, but it should be a question mark that they should be able to click on that and then work the process to do a, a help ticket. And then additionally, soldiers, as a last resort, this, again, is a last resort, they can contact the Army Ignited Help Desk, and that phone number, get ready for it, is 276-231-0938. That's 276-231-0938. Or they can email them at army at bamtech.net. So let me spell it for you. It's army at B as in boy, A-M, tech, T-E-C-H dot net. So bamtech.net, army at bamtech.net. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Know, right? <laughs> crazy. So anyway, that's the best ways to work those issues. Awesome. So um, what about CA? Or That's credentialing assistance. Uh, what changes occurred recently with this program? So it has finally migrated to the new Army Ignited system too. So we're seeing that. That's good. Um, the big, big change, other than the migration to the new system, is that officers are going to no longer incur a military service obligation. And that's, that's cool. fantastic, because prior to that, you know, that was adding time to your time in uniform. 
Um, basically, now they have to complete their credential at least 31 days. Hear me again. 31 days prior to separation. So prior to an ETS or an MRD, they need to complete that um, credentialing. That last class date needs to be no less than 31 days. So that's kind of really a cool deal in terms of the change for this program. Also, they have to submit grades within 30 days of the end of the course, um, or they're going to get a recruitment. So if you don't get those grades in or you don't see that populating, you need to be working with your academic institution and press, press that issue, or you're going to get a recruitment. And some of these certifications are not cheap. <laughs> Definitely not. No. Um, requests for this program have to be submitted 90 to 45 days prior to the start date of the course. And this is not something that we process internally in our office. This is held at the national level. So I recommend you don't wait until day 45 again because, you know, like we said earlier, it, it, it can have issues and you need to work things. So I would suggest you do it w- a little before that. Uh, the program is on hold, though, until 9 January of 2023. This is due to the continuing resolution. So basically, you, you can't use it just yet for the new fiscal year. Um, it's coming, but, you know, that CR is kind of putting a damper on things. Exactly. On a lot of things, actually. But. Yeah. So, um, And then lastly, you need to check for program options. Before you do anything with Army, uh, well, not Army Ignited, with credentialing assistance, you need to check for what options are available and who are the vendors. You know, is it going to be local to where you live? Is it going to be in the state of West Virginia? Are you going to have to travel? Whatever. But the best place to do that is at www.cool, so that's C-O-O-L dot O-S-D dot mil slash army slash. Nice. <laughs> slash, slash. Slash. <laughs> So what can our soldiers do to ensure they are uh, tracking these changes and stay up to date in the future? So there's a lot of different ways that, that this information gets pushed out. Of course, we have Ed Talks, right? Exactly. <laughs> no better place to be. Right. You can also check out our social media channels, and we have a ton of them. We have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of those you know key social media channels that we're permitted to utilize. We have those. Another resource is to look for the Guard webpage, and you can simply Google that one. Just Google West Virginia National Guard. Be sure you're not going to the recruiting page because that's not, that's not the right one. This is the actual West Virginia National Guard page. Um, you're going to see different tabs at the top, and you're going to look for resources, and underneath resources is where you're going to find the Education Services page. And we update that regularly. In fact, I'm working on those updates this week. Um, you can listen for updates when you're at drill, so coming from your unit and your wings. You know, are they hopefully getting that information out to you when you're when you're in formation or whatever, letting you know these things? Um, the units in the wings can request us to come in and do briefs, and then of course you can always contact us. Our main office number is three zero four five six one six three six one. So you can give us a yell there, and we can get you that information too. But these things change, and. I think, I mean, if you would uh, add the uh, Army Ignited page, almost like a social media page in your uh, repertoire of checking things, uh, that might be a good advice as well in the future. So, yep. Yep. Uh, Dr. Shaver, thank you for sharing uh, this information. There have been a lot of changes for sure. Yep, it's a lot of changes, but, you know, we this is the way it is, and we just roll with it and make the best of it. So join us next time on Ed Talks when I return the reins to Dr. Schaefer and we will have another special edition focus on upcoming changes to our state tuition assistance program, the WVEEP program. WVNG Ed Talks. Tune in, turn it up, and join the conversation.